In order to achieve that, we have to make sure that we have a stable Afghan government, and we also have to make sure that we've got a Pakistani government that is working effectively with us to dismantle these networks. What we then said was we would put in additional troops to provide the time and the space for the Afghan government to build up its security capacities to clear and hold population centers that are critical, to drive back the Taliban to break their momentum, and that beginning next year we would begin a transition phase in which the Afghan government is taking more and more responsibility for its own security. Here's what we did not say last year. We did not say that starting July 2011, suddenly there would be no troops uh, from the United States or allied countries in Afghanistan. We didn't say we'd be switching off the lights and closing the door behind us. What we said is we begin a transition phase in which the Afghan government is taking on more and more responsibility. That is the strategy that was put forward. What we've also said is, is that in December of this year, a year after this strategy has been put in place, at a time when this additional troops have been in place and have begun implementing strategy, that we'll conduct a review and we'll make an assessment. Is the strategy working? Is it working in part? doing enough to build Afghan security capacity? Uh, how are we working effectively with our allies? So we are in the midpoint of implementing the strategy that we came up with last year. We'll do a review at the end of this year. General Petraeus understands that strategy because he helped shape it. And my expectation is that he will be outstanding in implementing it, uh, and we will not miss a beat. Uh, because of the change in command in the Afghan theater. Keep in mind that during this entire time, General Petraeus has been uh, the CENTCOM commander, which means he's had responsibility in part for overseeing what happened in Afghanistan, and, and that is part of the reason why uh, I think he's going to do such a, a capable job. Not only does he have extraordinary experience in Iraq, not only did he help write the manual for uh, dealing with insurgencies, but he also is intimately familiar with the players. He knows President Karzai. He knows uh, the other uh, uh, personnel who are already on the ground. Uh, so our team is going to be moving forward in sync. Uh, it is true that uh, I am going to be insisting uh, on a unity of purpose on the part of all branches of the U.S. government that reflects the enormous sacrifices that are being made by the young men and women who are there. I mean, every time I go to Walter Reed, when I visited Afghanistan and I visited the hospitals, and you see young men and women who are giving their all, making enormous sacrifices on behalf of the security of this nation, my expectation is, is that the leadership is true to those sacrifices, that the strategy that we're promoting the manner in which we are working together at the leadership level fully, respect, uh, fully reflects and honors uh, the incredible dedication of our young men and women on the ground. Uh, that's what I expect, and I believe uh, that is what uh, I will receive. Uh, was there one last aspect to the question? Does anyone else need to, to go into in the chain of command? The, uh, I am confident that we've got a team in place that can execute. Uh, and now, I'm paying very close attention to make sure that they execute. Uh, and uh, I will be uh, insisting on extraordinary performance uh, moving forward. One last thing I just want to remind everybody, though. Uh, the, the issues with General McChrystal uh, that culminated in my decision yesterday were not as a, as a result of a difference in policy. I want to be very clear about that. He was executing the policy that I had laid out, that he was executing the orders that I had issued. 
uh, and that were reflective of the review process that took place last year. I'll try to be even briefer than my colleague, Mr. President. You know, I hope that we have quite friendly, friendly relations with President Obama, but I try not to give pieces of advice that cannot be fulfilled. This is a hard topic, a difficult one. I can say only two things. First of all, we believe that at present the United States and some other countries are assisting the Afghan people in obtaining the much-wanted statehood and restore the basis of the functioning of an effective state, restore their civil society and their economy. And in these terms, we will support and back the efforts of the ES. As far as our own experience, well, the well-known experience is concerned, I, I would very much like to see the Afghan people in near future having an effective state and a modern economy, and which requires toiling uh, more than a year. But this is the path to guarantee that the, uh, the most grave, the gravest scenarios of the, of the last time will not repeat. Please, Itartas. Good day, Itartas News Agency. I'm Michael Petrov. My question to President of the United States, who just mentioned that you discussed the issue of Russia's joining the WTO during your talks. But I must admit that and state that the uh, promises to facilitate Russia's entry has been heard by the Russian delegation for a decade. Could you more specifically name the time frame when you are referring to finalizing the process in near future? And the pr uh, our question to Medvedev, yesterday you visited the Silicon Valley. How did your perceptions or on future cooperation between Russia and the US in high-tech sphere changed, and what indicators should be reached so that you can call the cooperation a successful one? Thank you. On the WTO, first of all, I emphasize to President Medvedev, I emphasize to his entire delegation, and I now want to emphasize to the Russian people. We think it is not only in the interests of the Russian Federation, but in the interests of the United States and in the interests of the world, that Russia joins the WTO. So this is uh, something that we want to get resolved. Uh, in terms of time frame, let me give you uh, a sense of perspective from uh, our U.S. Trade Representative, Ron Kirk, uh, who has been in close contact and negotiations with his counterparts uh, on the Russian side. Uh, the way he described it is that 90, 95 percent of the issues uh, have now been resolved. Now, the remaining 10, 5 to 10 percent uh, are difficult issues uh, and are going to require some significant work. Uh, but there, that should give you some sense that a lot of work has already been done, even in the last few months. Uh, that makes an enormous difference. Now, in our joint statement, uh, what we are going to uh, essentially instruct our negotiators is that they try to come to terms with the technical issues that remain by the fall. Um, we are going to keep putting pressure on negotiators in the same way that we did during the START Treaty, so that these uh, there's a sense of urgency on the part of uh, our team. Uh, a lot of the technical issues, the resolution of those technical issues, though, may be in the hands of the Russian government. Uh, we've already made progress on some issues like encryption, for example. Uh, there, there may be certain international standards that require modifications in Russian law. Uh, so as much as possible, what I've told my team is we are going to do everything we can to get this done as quickly as possible. 
and we will be very specific and very clear about the technical issues that Russia still faces. Uh, and Russia then will act in accordance with uh, its needs and requirements internally uh, to meet uh, the demands of the WTO uh, in order to get this done. But I'm confident that we can get this completed, and I am confident that President Medvedev uh, and his vision for an innovative, modernized, uh, energized economy uh, are entirely consistent with uh, Russia's joining the WTO. I, and, and I also